church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like to, to thank the soul sisters and the soul, the soul brothers. With this call, uh, uh, the soul sisters and the soul brothers. When I grow up, I want to be like them. Uh, I want to be like them. I want to learn how to sing. But so far, some of us who can't sing we will wait for that day where Jesus shall give us a voice. Amen. Yeah. Let me see those who are happy to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. Amen. Now, let me hear you say amen. amen. All right. I'm, I'm not yet happy with your amen. Can I ask a question? How many of you believe in Jesus? Can I hear those who believe in Jesus say amen? Amen. The amen is better. You know, when, when a preacher greets you and your amen is called, you make the preacher to be scared. So when you say amen and you give a powerful amen, even the fear goes away. Uh, before I could share the word of the Lord with you, a story is told uh, in a certain place where a certain guy he had just graduated from a, a prestigious university, university called Harvard. Uh, but I want you to understand that this man was not only educated, but he was education. Uh, you, you know, people with small Anyana degrees, they've got at times a problem. They think that they are learned more than any other people. This man happened to be in a boat with a man that le left school at lunchtime. And as they were in the boat together, the guy wa that was educated uh, started looking into the skies and asked the man who was not educated and said, hey, sir, do you know anything called climatology? And this man said, I know nothing about climatology. Then the man who was educated said to him, 10% of your life is lost. The educated man started holding stones and rocks and looked at him and says, do you know anything called geology? The study of rocks, the man said, I know nothing of geology. He said, 10% of your life is lost. And then as a, in a way of trying to show that he knows Hebrew, he started reciting Genesis 1 verse 1, Elohim bara et ashamayim et areth. Do you know anything called theology? And the man said, I know nothing about theology. He said to him, 10% of your life is lost. There arose a storm. They are in the boat. The storm comes and the storm starts to beat the boat. And the boat, the water starts to get on board. The uneducated man looks at the, the educated man and said, Sir, do you know anything called swimiology? <laughs> the man says, I know nothing about swimiology. Then he said to him, 100% of your life is lost. <laughs> Let me say to you this evening, Jesus says, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his life? Life in the absence of Jesus 
is not 10%, but it is a 100% loss. Make it a point this evening that as you go home, or you go where you stay to your dormitory, or even outside where you stay, make sure that you make a relationship with Jesus. Allow me today, this evening, to go to the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. But I'd like us to, to read probably a story that you have heard preached for a long time. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, we would read verse 24 and verse 25. Then from there, we would try to preach, and we finish the sermon early. Uh, Daniel chapter 3, we read verse 24. Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, astonished, and he rose up in haste and spake, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he said, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth man is like the sun of God. If we give a title to our message this evening, we will say, A God with a Face. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your word, and we pray that you explain your word in the most simple, simple way and easy way for us to understand and go home revived and being pointed to Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray it. Amen. Amen. Now, the, the book of Daniel, uh, to those who are Bible students, the book of Daniel is what is called, uh, is what is called the apocalyptic literature. And the reason why it is called the apocalyptic literature it is because the, 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 the genius or, or the, the content of the book itself points to the future that is yet not revealed. It is a revealed future, but a future that is not yet actualized. If you were to divide the book of Daniel, the, the book of Daniel has 12 chapters, but the first six chapters of the book of Daniel are primarily historical, and the last chapters, the last six chapters of the book of Daniel are, 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 are what we call the visions or prophecies. But let me be, be quick to say, that the book of Daniel is not about the little horn. Many people, when they look into the book of Revelation and Daniel, they are looking for the little horn and scary beasts that are in the book of Daniel and Revelation. But the book of Daniel and Revelation is the book about Jesus. If you get what the book is about, you would not go looking for things that are not there in the book. And I want us to, to notice this, that the book of Daniel begins with a defeat of Judah and concludes with the standing up of Michael. That when, when Judah seems to be defeated, but to God, defeat is not defeat, but defeat is an appointment where God wants to show his power. When you read from the first six chapters of the book of Daniel, all the trials and the tests, they, all the stories of the narrative, they begin with a test and they conclude with an elevation. That God does not allow you to go through circumstances without him having to lift you up. So, chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar has forgotten the dream. Chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar makes a statue, but the difference with the statue is that the statue is pure gold. In essence, Nebuchadnezzar is saying that the statue interpretation of chapter, true, of chapter 2 is not true and Babylon will remain forever. It was a shift from what is revealed to a shift to challenge God that, that the kingdom of Babylon remains forever, whereas the kingdom of God is the only kingdom that has a leader that is not voted for. And when you get to chapter 3, the Bible says, in a plain of Jura, in the plain of Jura, those who studied archaeology, they say the plain of Jura is in a place today that is called Iraq. 
And many people will say that the, 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 the former leader of Iraq, Saddam Hussein, will stand up and claim to be the direct lineage of Nebuchadnezzar, the great king of Babylon. And the statue is made and an edict or, or, or an instruction comes that says that every man that does not worship the statue will be killed and the, everyone when they hear the sound of music they must come forward and bow down to the image allow me to say because they were taken from israel the priests who were in babylon they bowed down the deacons they bowed down the elders they bowed down but the bible says only three young men remained standing let me say to all of us sitting here today, God is not interested in numbers, but God is interested in faithfulness. Hence the Bible says, when, when Samuel speaks, he says, obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, it is Ellen White in the book, uh, 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 in the book, Messages to Young People, that the greatest want of the world is the want of men who in their innermost souls are honest and true. Men who do not fear to call sin by its rightful name. Men whose conscience is true to duty as the needle to the pole. These days we've got preachers who are satisfied to preach about the, the, the righteous, or, or to, to preach about the grace of God, but they do not preach about the God who demands obedience. The pulpit these days is quiet. It tells us about the cross, but it does not want to tell us about the Jesus who walked to the cross. People are interested in Calvary, but before Calvary was, there was a man who walked obediently to the cross. The Bible says, when all men knelt down and worshipped the statue, the three men remained standing, and they were called to the king, and the king asked them, Oh, oh you, 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 you did not worship. Then this guy says, listen, oh king, we are not careful to answer you. But one thing we know, that our God is able to deliver. That even if he does not deliver, we are not going to bow down to your, to your golden image. Now, we are living in the days where people want to want a make me feel good religion. A religion of noodles. A religion that says to us, when God does not do, he does not, he is not God. Yet Rabbi Kushner says, we are in the presence of his absence. His absence physically is not an evidence that he is not there. Rabbi Kushner says, God does not need to prove himself that he is powerful. Even when God does not do anything, he is an able God who has decided not to do anything. So his ability is not tested by what he does, but his ability is tested by what he decides also not to do. The Bible says, the record says, even if I want us, I want you all king to know that we will not worship your statues. And the king says now, who is this God that is able to deliver you from my hand? Immediately, it ceased to be about the three guys. It became a business between God and Nebuchadnezzar himself. Now, allow me to tell you this. When I arrived in a university called Solusi, we know each other. There, there was, I, I want you to, 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 to listen to this very carefully. There was this young lady who came to Solus. And everyone in Solus knew, knew that there is this girl who came. She, she was not your ordinary type of a girl. She, she was a beautiful girl. I, I don't want you to miss this. She was not only beautiful, but she was beautiful. <laughs> everyone wanted the girl. The accountants went to her, they failed. Science went to them, they failed. Up until theology guys were left. And the question was asked, the question was asked, who shall go for us? Now, now in the art of black preaching, I was taught in the art of black preaching, in homiletics, that when you preach to your audience, you take them from the known to the unknown, and you bring back to the known. And I sat down and I asked the question, what is it that she does not know? I discovered that she had been to school 
but she had never been to the cafeteria. All the guys wanted to take her for a date and take her to town. When I went to her, I presented what was never presented to her. I said to her, can I take you out? Can I take you out? Then she asked me where. Then I said to the cafeteria. <laughs> now, I, 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 allow me to say to young, to young men who are not married and are seeking to propose, don't tell her what she knows. Because what she knows is not interesting. You must tell her what you are able to offer. I was able to offer the cafeteria when everyone offered town. Then she got interested, she got excited, and, and she went to the cafeteria. We would go to the cafeteria around half past five, and I told her that we are going to go at cafeteria at 6 p.m. when everyone is at the cafeteria. And when we got to the cafeteria, when we got by the door, there was silence in the cafeteria. And when everyone looked, I held her hand. And I started walking slow. When you are walking with a beautiful lady, you don't run, but you walk. <laughs> now, allow me to say to all of us that even when the devil brings tough time, David says, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. When you pass through valleys, you do not run, but you walk. Because walking says you've got confidence on the one who is walking with you. Now, now, when you are in a relationship, she became my girlfriend. We, we, you, you take photos in relationships, you know. There are certain pictures you don't, you don't delete. But she liked the real cut photos. But because I had decided earlier in my life that I am a short guy, the day I marry, I will not marry a tall girl because a tall girl will make me feel like I'm not in control. <laughs> but the shorter girl, at least you will feel like you are in charge. So she was, a, she was a bit shorter than me. But where I am going is that when I would make a fight with her, she will get so angry that she will go to the album and take a scissor and cut my image. Mind you, I want you to notice this. The image is not me, but the image is what I look like. Even in the great controversy, when the devil looks at God, God is bigger than him. He goes to the album of God. The album of God said, let us create man in our own image. Therefore, the battles you are passing through are not about you, but are about a God that you look like. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar asked, which God is able to deliver you from my hand? The Bible says, he made the fire seven times hotter. The reason why seven times hotter, he was afraid that this God can do something that he has never seen before. But my Bible tells me, imagine with me, brothers and sisters, the day comes, the, all the newspapers of the capital city, Babylon, are having the faces of the three guys, 10 days towards their execution. And within the 10 days, probably as the days were getting closer, they thought that these guys, they will recant and go back. But as five days got closer and closer, the day came. The Bible says, even those who threw them in the fire were consumed by the very same fire. Now, my Bible does not tell me that Nebuchadnezzar was a prophet. But Nebuchadnezzar, all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar receives the gifts of prophets. He sees things other people cannot see. Now, I, allow me to talk about this before, I, before we close. There are three mistakes that Nebuchadnezzar did. The first mistake that Nebuchadnezzar did was binding three Christians in the fire. Number three in the Bible represents the Trinity, the Godhead. He did not know that he was playing with a divine number. The second mistake that he did was making the fire seven times hotter. If God has a signature, 
He signs with number seven. In the world, there are seven continents. In the rainbow, there are seven colors. In the music, there are seven musical notes. Nama dipped himself seven times by the river Jordan. Jesus spoke seven times by the cross. In the book of Revelation, there are seven seals and there are seven trumpets. On the seventh day, God rested. Nebuchadnezzar did not know that as he was trying to make the fire seven times hotter, he was just air conditioning the fire. Now my Bible says, instead of the fire to bend them, the fire bent the chains. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever the devil is doing in your life, when it is meant to destroy you, it is also meant to bless you. My Bible says, now listen to this, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar says, I see four men walking around the fire. Now these guys are not seated, but they are walking. And he says, the, the seventh one looks like the son of God. Now, I don't know what was happening in the fire, but I'm an African preacher. I think there was a song in the fire. I am a South African brother. We sing when we are happy. We sing when we are scared. And we sing when we are angry. Probably there was a song in the fire. The song was, my hope is built on nothing except Jesus and his righteousness. And I think Shadrach was singing first tenor, Meshach second tenor, Abednego baritone, and the fourth man was singing bass. As they are singing, when they are singing, when they say, our faith is built on nothing, they all turned and looked at the fourth man, except this man and his righteousness. Now the third mistake that Nebuchadnezzar did, is that he calls the three guys out of the fire. It is interesting. He sees four, but he calls three. How can you see four and call three? He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out of the fire. These guys come out, and the fourth man remains in the fire. And I'm here to tell you this evening that fires of life shall come, but it depends who you know. And the fires of life, as they come, there is a man who has remained in the fire for us. Now, this, this, this chapter finishes in a strange way. The three Hebrew boys, they spoke before the fire. After the fire, there's no record of them speaking. Imagine if Muyilo was in the fire. The whole world church was going to know that there was a man in South Africa who went through the fire and came out without being bent. I was going to tell the whole world that I, have a, I am a fireproof guy. But these guys, these guys never told anything. The Bible says they kept quiet. But the people went around them. The Bible says they touched their clothes. What does that mean? There are times where we need not to tell testimonies, but we need to shut up. There are times where testimonies don't need to be told but they need to be seen, they need to be experienced. There is a, a, a boy that came to my primary school from the, from, from the Eastern Cape. He's a rural boy. I, I, want, I want you to notice that this guy was not only a rural boy, he had a strong SRP, strong rural background. He was a rural boy. And I made a mistake of starting a fight with a rural boy. I gave him a punch the rural boy gave a punch back. And I want you to know that there is a difference between a punch of a city boy and a punch of a rural boy. <clears throat> the punch of a rural boy is a learned type of a punch, but the punch of a city boy is a type of a punch that is weak. Then I discovered that if I continued fighting, this boy will beat me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> then I said to him, listen, uh, we will continue the fight. After school is after school. And when the bell rang, they all sang, after school is after school. But there is a, a, a way that they used to sing it, and they used to say it, probably in Kenya you will not understand it, but we had a word in sort of called Guri. They will all sing Guri. Guri, that means a fight is coming. A fight is coming. The rural boy removed his shoes and, and folded his trousers. When I looked at his heel closely, he had cracks. Then I knew that if I don't run away, I will be in trouble. I was the first one to run. But now, because I've always been a big boy like I am, I was never the fastest runner. 
Now, the difference between rural boys and city boys, when city boys chase you, they give up so fast. But rural boys, they don't give up. I was running. This guy was not giving up. He was chasing and trying. But I thank Jesus because I was staying close to the school. When I saw my grandfather standing in the gate at home, I stopped running. I turned back and I looked at him and I asked him, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And the rural boy did not fight, not because he was afraid of me, but because he saw my grandfather. What am I saying to you? When tough times come, we shall not run to people, but we must run to our older brother. The Bible says our older brother is none other than Jesus. It is Isaiah who says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and they shall never get weary. You know, you must look at an eagle. You see, when an eagle fights with a snake, the eagle does not fight with the snake on the ground because the snake is powerful on the ground. What an eagle does, it takes the snake and it changes the battleground. It takes the snakes and fly higher. And it is known scientifically that at a certain altitude, the snake loses its venom. When it is up in the sky and the, and, and, and the eagle lets go of the, of, the, of the snake, it goes and hits the rocks and die. And one writer says, if it happens that the snake bites the eagle, the eagle will fly higher and fly to the direction of the sun. As it goes towards the direction of the sun, the temperatures are going high. As they are going high, the eagle will start to sweat. As the eagle sweats, the poison gets excreted from its body. What am I saying to you? The devil can do damage in your life. He will make you not to be able to pay fees. You might fail even your exam. But instead of looking at your problem, look into the sun of righteousness. When we look to him, even our pains do not, do not feel the same way they were. I'm here to tell you this evening that the Jesus who remained, I have heard pastors lying in the name of Jesus, saying that there was a comet in heaven. How can there be a comet in heaven? Who shall we send when Jesus is omnipresent? When they went to the fire, Jesus walked to the fire with them. There is no way where when we are tried, we are tried in the absence of God. Now, just for notes for, for theology students, notes. I give you a note to go and read on the providence of God. The providence of God teaches us that when problems come to us, God might not remove the problems, but prayer, as we pray to him, prayer does not change God. It might not even change the circumstance, but God can preserve you even in the circumstance. Yeah. The circumstance was the fire. God would have avoided the fire, but instead of avoiding the fire, he went with the, through the fire with them so that he gives them the testimony. Amen. I am here to tell you, as we close this, that Jesus has great plan for your life. When we give him our lives, he is able to do what we can never do for ourselves. I want to pray, not with everyone, but I want to pray with someone that says, Pastor, the exams are coming. My fees are not yet paid. I'm not sure whether I'll write the exams or not, but I'm here to tell you, I know a Jesus who is able to do things for us that we can never do for ourselves. Let me conclude by sharing a testimony with you. When I was doing my last year in Solusi, I was owing the school 23,000 rands. I was raised by my grandparents. My mom was not working. My father was somewhere where he knows. I don't know where, but he was around. <clears throat> so I was owing the school. And I was asking myself questions. How would I finish and graduate? I remember there was what we call Star Science South Africa, you might never know. It's a young people's event where we go there. It was Dasa Media, and I got invited during my last year, doing few courses. I went there, and in the evening, Sabbath Vespers, supposed to go back to school, having this mind in my mind that I need fees, but fees are not there. It happened that in the evening it was dark, people are coming out of the hall and they're in a rush. This couple says to me, Pastor, we have been looking for you for a long time. 
Um, actually, the husband comes says, can we please go to my car? Can we go to my car? My wife is in the car. I, I escort these people. Please, please, I don't want you to say to people, Muyula met angels. No, it, they were human beings. I could touch them. Probably uh, angels. Oh, but angels pulled Lord. Probably they could touch. But I'm not saying they were angels. They were human beings. I went with them to the car. Then they said, we wanted to give you fees. I never told those guys how much I owed. I kept quiet. But they took out a check. And they wrote 23000 exactly the money I was owing. When they gave me the check, I still don't remember whether I said thank you or not. But I left the car as fast as I got into the car. I left with the check not believing that it was real. Why am I sharing this story? Is that I met those people that day, and it has been six years in the ministry, I've never met them again. And I'm here to tell you that if you think your God has failed you, your God is too small. You must try this Jesus of ours that is able. I don't know what you are passing through. At times, school is tough. School is made to be tough. I think Baraton is a good school. I also think Solusi is the best school. But Solusi will, electricity will go and they will not cancel the exam. Exam will be tomorrow, electricity goes the whole of Zimbabwe, and you'll think they'll cancel the exam. The exam is still on tomorrow. With or without electricity, the exam is coming. If you think that uh, uh, you are facing tough times, school is tough. School has been tough. But one thing that I know, God will not allow you to come to this place and embarrass you. When you have come and you have stepped here, God will actually make sure that you leave this place graduating and also being able to live and minister. And if it is your desire tonight to say, Lord, things are tough. I am in the fire, but I am reminded this evening that there is this man who is in the fire with me. The fire is not meant to finish you, but the fire is also meant to bless you. Imagine all of us sitting here going through life without problems. We'll become arrogant, proud professionals. And I thank you, Jesus, that most pastors, they struggle with fees. Imagine pastors who are having issues, or, because pastors, most of the time, we struggle with issues of arrogance. Imagine if you are a pastor, you go through school, and everything is easy for you. You will not see the need of, defend, of depending in God in your ministry. If you have learned dependence, even when you go and leave this place, you will not cease to depend on God. I'm here to tell you, that Jesus is able. He is able to change our circumstances. I want to pray with someone that says, I am facing tough times. The future seems bleak. I don't know how I'm going to write. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with someone that says, I've got sponsors that are taking me to school or at home, but they are struggling. And you are asking for a miracle on their behalf so that God does something in their lives so that you can be blessed as well. If that is your prayer, someone here is sitting, Matt is, 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 Matt is right, instead of writing Matt, Matt is writing you in the name of Jesus, like the pastor. If you have a problem, any academical, I know, Hebrew and Greek can be tough. If you are passing through that and you need Jesus to help you, if you are in our midst and you've got that prayer request in right now, please stand up with me as I pray with you. God bless you, my brother. I know that Jesus is able to do great things. Oh, so all of you have got problems. I'm surprised to see all people who have problems. God bless you. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. We, we thank you, Lord, because all your promises are true in Jesus. We can stand here, Lord, and preach and make all the noise we can. But other people, as they come here, in the noise or in the business of life in school, we do not know that at night they are crying and their pillows are wet. Others, Lord, are waiting. The exams are fastly approaching, but the fees are not yet paid in full, and they don't know whether they are going to write or not, but we are praying that may you meet them at their point of need. Some, Lord, we are here at school. We might be having challenges academically, we pray that, Lord, may you do for us a great miracle of grace. 
We pray that, Lord, may you help your children to succeed in whatever they do, Lord, as they do their part in studying their books. We pray, Lord, that may you also meet them, Lord, where they need you most. We pray, and Lord, we want to thank you that you allowed fires to come to us and to approach us, not so that we get consumed by the fires, but so that we might have an experience with you. I pray that, Lord, as we continue this week of prayer, some who are standing here, they need serious deliverance from addictions and from many challenges they are faced with. We pray that, Lord, may you deliver all of us in the name of Jesus. Keep us all safe and bring us back tomorrow to worship you. In Jesus we pray it. Amen. Amen. God bless you.